Worship God together, we pray together, and we all want to have some together. Amen. Little inside joke. He was talking about if I don't see something about if we all die right now, and I'm saying, Well, are you waiting for us to get hit by lightning or something? Can... Anyway, I, I wandered off, right? Yeah. So you are expecting something. <laughs> anyway, it's so good to see everybody. So so good to have everybody uh, come worship with us. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, hopefully it will not be your last time. We'll see how that goes. Let's get out and do a little howdy neighbor. I <laughs> Cherishes, watch over us, help us grow up. 
able to this day, and they're still worrying over us. Father God, they will, may their hearts always be tender. Be with us as we listen to Brother Ken's message this morning. May it touch our hearts. May we put into practice the things that we hear. These things will ask for you in the last line. Amen. Amen. Or excuse me, I would give you the only one for the small for single power. Thank you for the green. Oh, great train, you need to thank God. And the one who turns by fire on the track. Well, you know, she's probably a friend. From the back, in the back, on the ball, on the seat. So you think it's me. But I don't pass the day works. No one's bad at your mom's hearts. In the phone, they can hold you in the morning. Not the grenades. Everything will be fine tonight. The roads. I'm on the subscribe. Mama, it's right. Mama, it's right. I think you have it. Can we do that? Twist like that. Your old lady brings you so up on all the heavy road. May we find you to see. Or can you to now raise one thing to have? Leave us on the ground. We need to be there. I turn 20 to make the fire. I'm the fire. I'm the church. On Mother's Day, I always pick out some good country songs that talk about mothers. Now, Mama Trident was about it. Uncontrollable. She had wind up in prison. Mama still loved her. Now, Hungry Eyes is another Merle Haggard song that he wrote. And it's about what Mama's still to trying to take care of the family. And things are hard times. Mama has it rough out there. Got a kid that's squalling. Husband, he's a busting, trying to get things working. Dogs are barking, cats are ruined. That's just a normal day for her. But it's what's my mom. Guess who was calling? <laughs> a candy, covered trimble, even crowded, but every day, and then, in this country, I be by. Oh, my day, really is the fact that it is. Went to you hard, working hand, and tried to feed my mind, hungry I had to be. Big great does something good, and my mama's faith was true, and the skin burned to you. Really bad. Bad another class. Put us somewhere just below. One more reason. Oh, my mama's hungry. Mama, yeah. But it was dry. She 
Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you ladies. Wednesday at 6.45 p.m., the youth meet. 7 p.m., we have Wednesday night service. Thursday at 9 a.m., we have intercessory prayer. Monday, May the 9th at 6 p.m., we're going to be running the second episode of The Chosen. It's really good, y'all. Uh, we're having pizza and uh, ladies if you, or anybody that comes. He could bring a salad or a dessert that would be appreciated. May the 29th through June 3rd is summer camp. The kids will leave church right after church that Sunday. May the 14th is a play day. Books at 10. You buy it at 11. May the 21st, 9 a.m. at North Point, we will be having the women's breakfast. May the 22nd, there's a women's meeting right after church service. May the 15th, there's going to be a camp meeting right after service. So if your child is going to camp, please try to attend. Let's not forget our backpack program. Uh, if you can help, please bring, there's a list of things on this that uh, they will be needing. So if you could bring something, I'd appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's Okay, any help you can give would be deeply appreciated. Did I miss anything? Today is the last day for t-shirts for the next till, till July. Okay. Today is the last day for t-shirts till July. So if you want a t-shirt, you need to let the ladies know and let them get it made for you. Anything else? Good. Yes. Yeah, I look right there. Oh, the man, the man hold their, uh, 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 men's breakfast every first Saturday, is that right? Of the month. And here's the thing with morning. Uh, we had kind of a slow morning here at State. There's only about two or three hundred guys here. We had, a, we had a, several several people, I don't know how many pounds of bacon and, and sausage and eggs. 
yesterday. Uh, there's also, from what I understand, the first annual car show here. Is no, we're in the entry. We have one of the entries here today. But it was a good time. Good time had by all. If uh, if you don't like the car, you don't like to eat, you ought to come for the storytelling because we always tell some stories. And there's a couple people in here <laughs> that really have a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> it's really kind of wretched. Yeah. <laughs> but it's officials are WJ. I'm going to have to be here in fellowship at the church and have a have a have good food, the cooking teams, and the chef team always oh, does a great job. The breakfast we had here was fantastic. Everybody was so good and the fellowship was so good. I really encourage everybody come check it out. Except the women, it's a men's team thing, but come check it out. Okay, and I will tell you this. I don't know who it was. Yesterday, I didn't hear a challenge that here for long. The men's team is going to challenge the woman, the women's team in a cook off. Kyle. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he's he's talking about anything else? Yes, ma'am. At North Point, there at Denton on University. Anything else? Okay, is that time to hug next, shake hands, and say howdy? You guys have a blessed week. For Brittany, move back here, please. I don't need Always in the way. Always in the way, Doug. Oh, you try to Back to I should have said it. Yes, exactly. I agree. I mean, this is great. And, and they this thing. Yes, I agree. I know I find these. And you really need shares, and I got it for five bucks a call. I know. You say it's all mine? Never. What? Do you think? And I'll write it. And we
house and okay. No, it didn't say live, laugh, love. Uh, I haven't been there, okay. But look, it's here. So when we think of a gift, we think of a present, right? He was a present on our birthday. We give our mom a gift on Mother's Day. Christmas, we open up gifts. But did you know that the best gifts don't come in a box? So inside my box, I have a couple pictures here. That's what it's not paying attention to the first one that happened. And that is, that's, that's my mom. This back, this was me at a, right before my wedding. This was my mom and I together. And my mom is a gift to me from God. Not only did she give birth to me, um, but she helped raise me. And even today, if I'm having a bad day, I rarely call my mom. I FaceTime my mom. I, that's the miracle of technology that I appreciate Jesus for every day. I can see my mom's face. And I know there's a lot of moms out there, a lot of us out there that can't see our mom's face. But our mom is a gift from God. And I'm of the opinion that the best gifts aren't actually tangible like this. They're not in a box. They don't come in a box. Jesus was a gift to us, right? And our mom is a gift to us. So we need to make sure that we treasure her for that. And we let her know, not just one day a year, how important she is to us. Think about your day and all of the things that your mom does in that day. Get you up, even though you don't want to. Make sure you have a breakfast. Make sure you get to school. Make sure you have clothes. And that you don't walk out the door looking like a dork. Although, that's that was failing. What do you know? Um, but yeah. Let's make sure that we appreciate the gift that God gave us in our moms. And I know for some of us, we may not have a mom, but we have ladies in our lives that are like a mom has, right? That have put their arms around us, like a mom figure, exactly. And they put their arms around us and treat us like they're very young. Okay? Can we all do that? Just make sure we hug the neck of our mom or someone that's like a mom to us, okay? Yes, Miss D. Yes, Miss D. Let's look at it out. Fish, yeah. All right. Maybe if I could give you guys some candy. Hurry up a little bit today. So, all right. Is there anybody that would like to pray us out? Sure, Chris. Go for it. Thank you, Lord, for all your great big colors to you. Thank you for our moms. Thank you for the blood that you give us, Lord. And just kind of our business is skin as we go to the church. Amen. All right. Let's head on out. Thank you. It was good. I'm glad you were happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm going to do one thing and then we wouldn't do it. But uh, about 30 years ago, this old brother of double North Can Cowboy wrote a poem that was pretty soft, and I'm just willing to tell you what it was. It's Mother's Day appropriate. My mom was pretty sick, and I wrote this poem. Time will never change my love, for it shall always be the dearest, most important thing in all of the world to me. Although we'll go on living our whole lives through, time will never change my love, for it belongs to you.
great, great day. Great day. Thank y'all, though, for being a good example for everybody. Oh. Let's go, Lord. 
great job. We come to you this morning just just happy to be in your house, Lord, just to uh, just to uh, worship you, fellowship with our with our church family, Lord. We also bring up a, a lot of people who are who are sick, Lord, and they're scared. Their families are scared. It's really a really nervous time for us. So we ask that you uh, you heal the people. We ask that you uh, uh, lift up their families, comfort them, wrap your arms around just to. Uh, the people let them know that you've got this covered Lord. Uh, anything, all things for you are possible. But we just give you thanks for the days you give us. Uh, thanks for this church on we can come here. We just ask that you watch over us and be with us. Guide us and direct us and forgive us in all things that we do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We just need to be thankful that family will be don't have a deep burn. It's not simply flat in this area. It's not honest that anything can happen to them. Say a quick prayer. Father God, I just come to you, Lord, and I just ask for your help one more time. I just ask you, God, to do this song. Change me. Give me the right words that might touch someone's heart. Lord, I say this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Mother's Day sermon. <coughs> Proverbs 31, 26, and 29. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household. It does not eat of the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. This verse was written thousands of years ago for Mama. At her passing, she had her whole family there alongside her bed, including my cousin, who's lived nearly his entire life with us. And my cousin made this statement. He said that she was my mom too. My brother and I were very blessed to have such great parents. So much so that they made room for my cousin. My wife always says, a child cannot have too many people to love them. And that's very evident whenever she gets around a little person. My mother-in-law raised two kids of her own, adopted two more, and raised six foster kids. So while visiting her, one night, she made the comment that fostering children was her calling. We talked about that. Then she asked me if I had ever preached on the book of Ruth. That Ruth was her favorite book in the Bible. I said no, but if she would come to church on Mother's Day, she would hear a message on Ruth. I prayed that she would feel well enough to it. But if she didn't, nevertheless, I was going to preach on Ruth in her honor. Because I honor her for giving birth to my wife. Today, today set aside that we honor our mothers and let them know just how special that they really are. But I, I know that not all of us have mothers, especially good ones. But God tells us to honor them anyway for no other reason than the fact that they gave birth to you. The book of Ruth is one of the most beautiful love stories in the Bible. The story is that when Ben Franklin was the ambassador to France, he occasionally attended the Infidel Club, a group that most, spent most of their time searching 
for and reading literary masterpieces. So one occasion, Franklin read the book of Ruth to the club. But he changed the name in it so that no one would recognize that it was a book from the Bible. When he finished the list of the word, unanimous in their praise. They said it was one of the most beautiful short stories that they had ever heard and demanded that he tell them where he had ran across such a remarkable work of art. He loved telling them that it came from the Bible, that God wrote it. The book of Ruth is not only about Ruth, but another woman whose influence changed the course of history. Her name was Naomi. And the mother and daughter relationship that, that even though they were not mother and daughter, it was just splendid. It's about love. It's about honor. It's about faith. It's about commitment. And it's about the providence of God. I'm going to read from Luke 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Melech. His wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Killer. They were in mean, fact, from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and they lived there. Now, the Malachi, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Mo Moabite women, one named Oprah and the other one named Ruth. After they had lived there for about ten years, both uh, Malachi and Kilon also died, and now Naomi went. Naomi left with her two sons and her husband. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had came to aid of his people by providing them food for them, Naomi and her daughter-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughter-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant, you, grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. So the story starts out in Judah being a, being a family there. And a man named Elimelech moved his wife, and her name was Naomi, and her two sons from Bethlehem, which was the land promised by God to the Israelites, to Moab, to Moab, east of Bethlehem in Judah. Now, Moab was a single, forbidden country that worshipped many gods. But at that time, it looked like the best place for a temporary stay. So after arriving in Moab, it wasn't long that Limanac died and left Naomi with the two sons. The two sons stuck Moab wives, one named Oprah and one named Ruth. And soon the boys died, leaving Naomi alone. Hearing that things were better in Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Naomi decided to return home. So let's look at what happened so far. There was a famine in Judah because of the disobedience of God's children. That's why they did so God thumped it. Who here has ever been thumped in the back of your head by your parents to get your attention? It works. Not trusting God, a little act, he fled the famine only to die with his two sons in a forbidden country. Fled. Isn't that what we do? We grow impatient. We stop trusting God. Our prayer times become less and less frequent until sometimes not at all. Then we fall into the trap 
of trying to outthink God. The little act, he knew not to go to Moab. He thought, well, we just go there for a little while until things get better. Then we'll go back home. He was planning fine. This is the exact reason God gave him the famine in the first place. We talk about this all the time. There are people who make their confession faith. They get baptized in front of everyone. They join the church. And they think, you know what I'm in? I'm going to heaven. And they are. They just don't stick in there long enough to become more mature in the wall. Eventually, we don't hear from them. Until we see them in Walmart. And we say, hey, man, where have you been? And they give the same excuse that they used before they gave their confession of faith. Too busy. Too busy. It's Sunday, and it's my only day off, and I like to spend it with my family. It was written by the baseball park, coming in from Sunday, 2164 on Sunday. It's full. Full of kids and parents. And you know, I'm not complaining about any of this, but all those kids are not going to grow up and be professional baseball players. But you know what? They all are going to have to make a decision on where they're going to spend eternity, which is one. But you know what? It's their wall. It's not ours. And God, He is not a vengeful God. God does not hold grudges. God is not vindictive. God is a forgiving God. But you know what else? God is also a disciplinarian. So Naomi's husband and two sons have passed, and she heads back home. She urges her daughter in law to stay in the house. Oprah does, but Ruth does. Ruth explains it in this way. It comes from one. 16-17. This is probably the most beautiful thing ever, ever written in the Bible. At least it is for me. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And then God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. If King David was a man after God's own heart, Ruth was a woman after God's own heart. I think she was God's idea woman. And she deserves to be in the Bible. Her honor and commitment to her mother-in-law is amazing. She left her own family. And as far as she knows, she will, she will live life the life of a widowhood, and she will always be childless. She's going to an unknown land. Now, Ruth is, is a, uh, a Gentile, so she's, exact, she's not exactly going to fit in. Her commitment to her mother-in-law was more radical than marriage. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. In other words, she will never return home ever again, even when Naomi dies. The most amazing commitment of all of this is this. Your God will be my God. Ruth had no reason to believe in God except through the faith that she saw in Naomi. And that was enough for her. Here's your lesson right here. People will decide to be like you or not to be like you by your actions. If your faith in God is important to you and you live your life accordingly, you just might 
take someone with you to heaven. We're going to go to Ruth 2, 1, 2, 3. Now, Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man in standing whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. So she went out and she began to glean the fields behind the harvester. And it turned out she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Lemuel. So for, Na for, for Naomi and Ruth to survive, Ruth had to go out in the fields and pick up whatever grain was left behind. It's referred to as gleaning. To glean a field is to gather up everything that would drop or left behind by the harvesters bit by bit. This tells us a little bit about Ruth's character. First, I would imagine to glean a field must be very humbling, especially if it's someone that wasn't used to doing that. But not only did she do it for herself, she did it for her mother-in-law so that they both could eat. As Christians, we ought to be busy doing God's work. We ought to be busy gleaning God's field. We ought to be gathering up the lost souls, the, left, the ones that are left behind, the unwanted, the unknown, the unloved, the, the hard love. We're to gather them up one by one and show them the love of Jesus Christ. That's our job. That's what God, God has called us to do. Ruth 3, 1, 2. So one day Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not try to find a home? For you, where you will be well provided for, is not Boaz with the servant girls you have been, a kinsman of ours. Tonight you will be willowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash it for per perfume yourself and put on your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you were there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he's lying. Then go and cover his feet and lie down. And lie down, he will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, to you. This is where we start to see the providence of God. Out of all the fields in Bethlehem, Ruth goes to work in the field that belonged to Boaz, a relative of her late father. Now it's important because the law of redemption in those days was that when a man dies, his closest next of kin had the right to marry the widow. And the estate of the man will pass down to the widow's next born son as an inheritance. And that's how Boaz and Ruth got together. So you think today's society is confused? Think about how it would be if we had to live by their law of redemption. <laughs> to me, this part of the book resonates the, mess, the message of our redeeming salvation to prove Jesus Christ. Ruth and Naomi both were redeemed by Boaz. They both were destitute, except for Ruth gleaning the grain fields for their substance. You know what? Aren't we all have to do? If not for Jesus Christ who died for our redemption on the crowd, on Calvary Hill. Aren't we all deemed for damnation, be it for our Father in, in heaven who loves us so much? So Boaz took through and she became his wife. Then she, then she went to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. 
their child was over there. This is important because over there, he, he became the father to Jesse, and Jesse is the father of David, the greatest king of Israel. That would foreshadow the king of kings, Jesus Christ, direct lineage. Naomi, she lived her life every day in every way, even in her darkest times, she did not curse God. She did not leave God. And when Ruth looked into her eyes, she could see the love that Naomi had for her. She could see the faith and the love that she had for God. The only thing of value that we can give is what we are. Not what we have. I read this. We were born with nothing and we leave this earth with nothing. But we fight every day of our lives for what we have. Exactly what we do. It all started with the strong faith of Naomi that she had in God that led them to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. One woman's faith in God Another woman's commitment to her and their bonds that they had to each other resulting in them both being related to Jesus Christ. That's amazing to me. That shows the providence of God. That God does have a plan for us. They were just two ordinary women that had extraordinary faith. God's plan for them took, it took 2,000 years to happen. But they were in a, they were an integral part of God's plan for our salvation. And God has a plan for each and every one of us. When we do his call, whenever we accept his grace, we confess our sin and believe with all of our hearts, souls, and minds that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin and that he rose again in the Part of God's plan for us is this. If you are a son or a, son or a daughter, honor your mother. If you're a mother, love your children. Proverbs 22, 6, start our children off the way you should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn to them. I read this story by Virgil Hensley. Several years ago, in a tropical country where many Americans were living, a terrifying eye disease struck. It affected primary children. American children were seen to be more vulnerable, apparently due to an eye immune deficiency. The signs of the disease were unmistakable. Five days after the first symptoms appeared, the child would go blind. So one morning, one of the American mothers awoke to see all of the symptoms of the disease in her little girl's eyes. She immediately took her to the doctor, only to have her worst tears confirmed. Holding back the tears, the mother then took her daughter by the hand and they walked to a nearby field. The mother picked up her child and she held him. She told her to notice this how the sunlight lit the landscape dotted with the wild flowers. The mother then picked up one of the little yellow flowers, placed it in her daughter's hand, and they examined it together, the lovely, complicated structure that God could make. Then the mother turned to the little girl's face, to Jordan, her own, and asked her, what color is my hair? It's black, woman. Black and pretty. In my eyes. Look at them. What color were they? Blue. Blue is the sky. She patted her mother's face. And as the mother looked into her daughter's eyes, soon to grow deal, she asked her, And what do you see in your mother's eyes? Love. What do your children see when they look into your eyes? Did they see love? Did 
Yeah, they see God. Let's pray about it. Father God in heaven, we thank you for the blessings that are abound us. We thank you for this day that we can celebrate our mothers. I know for some that this day is especially hard. We ask that you give them special peace and comfort that only you can give. Lord, thank you for the moms. Lord, we ask that you place your healing hands on the folks that are healed and can't be with us. And travel mercies on those who are out on the roads. Just please continue to keep us and to bless us in all that we do. Continue to love us and forgive us, Lord God. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. So for you mothers, as we leave here this morning, we have a, we have a gift of some carnation for you. So as you walk through the door, there will be someone there to, to hand you one. Just know how I love you, God bless you.